Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our OTYD podcast. My name is Dakwon Yosias, and I am here with our guest stars. Can you please introduce yourselves? Hey, everybody. My name is Miraf. Hi, guys. My name is Lucas. Okay, we are super excited to be back. This is our next series, episode one, and it is titled Journey Coming Back Into the Church. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of fun. So I want to paint a picture before we start, okay? And maybe tell me if y'all agree with this or tell me maybe you've seen it in other people or just I want to hear y'all's experiences. <clears throat> There's a young person, okay, let's say high school, middle school, and they go to church with their parents every Sunday. But as they get older, it's a little difficult for them to come back to the church, wake up on that Sunday. It's a little difficult for them to kind of stay to the church routine. And as they get older, they move into college. Maybe they go far away or, you know, life becomes a little bit more difficult. They have other priorities. We've all been there, you know. Is that something similar that has happened to you guys? Or, you know, how did you deal with this type of situation? What was, we want to know, what was your journey coming back into the church? Either one of you can start. Go ahead, Mira. Go ahead, Lucas, no. my brother. He got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, start off like, I think for me, when I was in, I think about like 10th grade, like I, I joined our uh, Sunday school choir. And even then, you know, I was a part of the choir, I was a part of the Sunday school. I went to church, you know, most Sundays. Um, growing up, I, I did go to church, you know, on Sundays. And then we had practice on Fridays and everything. And even then, I, I didn't feel connected. To the church, mm -hmm. you know, I was I was serving the church. I was a servant, but uh, I didn't really feel that connected to the church, you know. Even though I was singing Muslim and everything. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, what was it? Do you think it was more of the language, or I know that's a big challenge for our youth. Uh, the kids, uh, Maringa, you don't even understand the lessons. You feel like, for me, honestly, I felt like it was a waste of time. It was a three, four hour period that I had to wake up for. I didn't know what was happening. We were usually late. What was that thing that disconnected you the most? I think more so than even the language, like even if, you know, the language is different, I just didn't have a reason to go to church. Like really, I didn't have like a reason. It's just like your parents wake you up, you go to church, you sing Muslim, you maybe learn a little bit of the Bible, but then you don't really have a reason to wake up. So if you don't have a reason, it's kind of hard to go to church, especially as you grow older. Mm -hmm. Good. What about you, Miraf? What do you think? Uh, mine was definitely different from Lucas. Mm -hmm. I, my parents were very involved in church. My mom was uh, in Sunday school and um, I, she was basically the person that I am. Like I, I thank her for it. She taught me a lot. Uh, uh, language wasn't a barrier. Um, Amarinya was actually the first language I learned to speak. Oh, yeah. Special. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just a little special, but yeah. So I fell in love with the church immediately. Um, I made sure like I did absolutely everything to learn. Um, there's actually one priest I owe a lot of thanks to. They've actually passed away, Rasada Abir Mogas. They taught me Wadab. My first Wadab, they taught me um, like everything. Like I, I, I just loved the church immediately. I was in choir when I was a kid, grew up and, you know, watching my mom and just learning, absorbing as much as I could. Um, you could say that, you know, once I got to college, it got a little bit difficult. Yes, mm -hmm. because even though I was still serving, there was still that, uh, well, I'm young and I want to go experience, um, you know, what the world has to offer a little yeah. bit. But then, you know, it's like, but God, you know, yeah. but I was kind of like in that halfway, you know. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, my, my experience was very different because I loved the church from the moment, like, I think I, my earliest memory would be like five, maybe. Wow. And I've always, I've always loved it. And I'm just glad that I'm still there and I'm still able to serve God in any way that I can. Good. So I'm great. I'm a, it's good that both of y'all have different experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucas, you as well, at a younger age, you went to the church or maybe at an older age? No, I, I grew up in the church yeah. and everything like that. It's just, I just went every Sunday. Like yeah. it just wasn't like outside of Sunday, um, you know, church really wasn't a part of my life. Like, you know, we were Christian and, you know, we, um, you know, we, you know, my parents tried to instill into me like Christian virtues and things like that, obviously. But, you know, in terms of like really falling in love with the church, growing in the church, um, having a reason to go to church every Sunday and, you know, uh, participating in different activities, I just didn't have that level of uh, love that I, you know, do have now. Good. So, yeah. So everyone, I feel yeah. like 
everyone is like on a spectrum. Mm-hmm. There's people that um, they go to church every Sunday, still don't get it, and they say, you know what? What's it benefiting me? Maybe it's it's okay for me to not go. And then there's people uh, closer to you, Pali Miraf, uh, that say, hey, I learned at a young age. I love it. This is what I want to do. I want to learn more. I'm going to put in my time and my effort into it. Um, then there's, you know, there's that type of level. I want to be... I want to talk more about the people coming back to the church. Mm-hmm. Some people had a, have a lot of difficulty, and there's a lot of different um, reasons why people don't come back to the church. Maybe both of y'all could explain a few reasons, you know, that stopped you. Or, you know, Mirap, of course, for you might have been easier. But going back to college is a big one. Uh, I know you were far away for college. You went to Houston. Of course, there's a few churches back there. Or you went to mm-hmm. San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Both. There's, okay, both. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. So, yes, there's a few churches there. But still, how was that experience like? For the people, they want to know, hey, I'm going to go to college in a few years. Um, it's, maybe there's no churches around. How can they still be intimate with God? Can I go first on this one? Yeah, okay. yeah that, that's the question was um, that's for you. So basically, um, when I went to college, um, I was like, you know, I didn't think twice about temptation or the social life taking mm-hmm. aspect, right? It's like, you know, why wouldn't I go to church? Yeah. And then I went. And even though I was serving, it was like, oh, you can easily fall into this trap. Yep. If everybody doesn't know, Houston is kind of that city that there's a lot of nightlife going on. There's, you know, and it's um, even though like it's a big city, I guess you can call it a college town in a way because yeah. I went to University of Houston, but then there was Texas Southern University, Prairie View University. There was Rice. There was Houston Baptist University. So you were all there. Yeah. Like we're all there. Like TSU was on the same street of where I lived wow. at, you know? So it was, wow. it's very easy to get wrapped up. Like I didn't even realize like things kind of went left and I was in this, I was stuck until... I don't want to say it's too late because it's never too late to go back to, you know, build your relationship with God. Um, but I was like, ah, oh, man, I need to kind of get it together, you know. And I think uh, in Dallas, when you have your parents and then I had my church friends who I grew up with, you know, to help me center me. And I didn't realize that, hey, Maraf, you're really not as strong as you thought. Mm, you know, you need help. Point. And so it clicked for me in Houston. And I was like, yeah, you're not that strong you're not, you don't even pray as much as you think you do, you know, just because I'm going to church doesn't mean necessarily that I'm always praying though. Cause you know, I can serve and leave. That's true. And that's what a lot of us don't realize. Like we can be in church and be disconnected. Um, and so that's kind of what happened to me, um, more or less. Um, so then when I came back to Dallas, um, I was like, all right, get it together. You need to be stronger. I didn't realize I was going to leave again and move to another city yeah. in San Antonio. And San Antonio is very, very quiet, very like family town. Um, and so I think I was a little bit better, a little bit stronger. Obviously, I had OTYD kind of supporting me always. Um, and I did better. Like I prayed that I didn't fall. And wow. because of that scared feeling, that pushed me even more to keep praying. Like, it's like I was praying out of like scaredness, you know? Yeah. I didn't want to disappoint God again. I didn't want to lose myself again. Um, so yet, yet again, there was another parish church, Mariam, um, in San Antonio. I think I'm very fortunate that everywhere I go, I always find a church. Yeah. So that's great. But I served there too. And thank God it was only for a year, to be honest, because San Antonio is different. So, but it helped. Even a year helps. Yeah. Six so, months helps. Yeah. So okay. year now I'm back. So hopefully I don't leave soon. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you to go. Yeah. Um, Lucas, what about you? Uh, you stayed in Dallas. Yeah, I did. You weren't too I far. Did. Eight or nine churches here. You could pick yeah. whichever one you want to go to every yeah. Sunday. There's plenty. So how was that experience for you? What was it? You know, you didn't have to go anywhere far. It wasn't too much temp- temptation still there. That life is still there. You know, the devil is still calling to you every day. But how was it going to God, actually? Yeah, like, definitely, um, even though, you know, I was in Dallas and everything, like, all the temptations, everything was right in front of me mm-hmm. and right in front of my fingertips. Um, I think, you know, even though like I was very close by, I was still as soon as I like graduated, um, you know, from high school, I was, you know, I really wanted to kind of try to build my own life mm-hmm. and uh, kind of be separated from the church. And I, I think what ended up happening is even though I was, you know, so uh, you know trying to be so disconnected from the church, I didn't have like a lot of uh, church friends. People encouraged yep. me to go to church. I still 
wanted to go to church. I, I had, for some reason, I had this desire and I couldn't, at the time I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't realize that why was this happening? But like, you know, every, every month or so I would try to go to church and I would just, you know, sneak in the middle of Gerase and then like just sit in the back, mm-hmm. just, you know, sit in the back, you know, just listen to the Gerase, listen to the sermon. Uh, Cause you know, I, I do understand Amarik and just, you know, listen to Muzmur and that I used to grow up with and everything. And it kind of like encouraged me. And then when I came back to my you know apartment or my dorm you know i had some sort of encouragement every month and even though like i wasn't living like a full christian life you know i wasn't you know praying every night or any, living the spiritual life that i have now it still was something that was enough for me and i think a lot of people sometimes they can kind of be afraid just to start going to church yeah even though they're so disconnected and then it wasn't until like you know later on in my life that i started coming to church on a regular basis. You're doing it for you, not yeah. for somebody else or not? Yeah, not at all. Like, I mean, you, most of the time, it was funny. Like, um, you know, my my parents, you know, they would, they would like, you know, at, uh, at Deborah Merritt, um, uh, St. Michael, you know, there's two stories, right? And, I would, and my parents, you know, they would sit in the front first few rows, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, that's where they usually sit. And I would just, you know, sneak in the back. And like, you know, most of the time, nobody would see me. You know, nobody would know I was there. You know, if if I pass by somebody, if they know me, you know, you know, obviously I say hi and stuff like that. But a lot of times, like people wouldn't even know I would be there. You know, mm-hmm. so it was just it was just for me, it just because I wanted some kind of connection. You know, even though it was difficult and it was something, you know, that I didn't do every day, I knew I needed it. Mm-hmm. So it's good because that that picture I painted in the beginning. Uh, me personally, when I was going into church, it felt like I was doing it more for my parents than for myself, mm-hmm. you know? And it didn't feel like I had that connection with God, but I was forced to go. That's how it was every single Sunday. And and it's funny because it's so difficult to wake up when you're doing it for somebody else. Yeah. But when you're doing it for yourself and you know the reason why, like you were saying, you have a strong why, a strong desire to get closer to God. That's when no matter what difficult path is in the way, you get closer, uh, yeah. you know, and I love what both of y'all are saying, actually, um, whether you go far away, two, three, four hours away from church or from family, from friends, people who encourage you to go like your parents that like you said, or Lucas, you're here in Dallas, uh, and it doesn't matter, temptation is always there, and, yeah. and that worldly life will call you regardless wherever you are, but at the same time, we always have to remember, this is the thing we forget is, God is always with us, and yeah. He is always calling us as well. You know, what was that decision? Was there ever a decision you just, you guys made that said, I'm going to church from now on. I don't care what's stopping me. I'm going to choose God's life. Or did it just kind of happen unexpectedly? Or, you know, like what you said earlier, was it a friend that encouraged you to go mostly? They they really said, hey, you should come to join us and, and come to church. Or what was that decision part making? Um so before I answer that, actually, there was something Lucas was saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, and I think you asked us in the beginning. A lot of the times, youth, it's like we get scared to go back to church yes. yeah. a lot of the times. and um, But like we're, we're forgetting like it's, it's God's house. It's nobody else's house. Um, and a lot of us seem to, we don't know how to differentiate that. We don't know how to differentiate. Well, my parents go there, my parents this, my and I understand that, like, you know, within the Ethiopian community, there's a lot of, you know, emphasis on like the older folks and what they have to say and stuff. But like if we truly see the church as God's home where he is worshipped and um and we believe like, you know, no matter what, like he wants me there. That home is like for me also to worship him, not just my parents. I think our outlook on church will really change for sure. Um, and I'm always an advocate on that, like, you know, and I think that's also something my confession father taught me. Like, it's like, we make mistakes, you know, we're human beings, but got to keep fighting to come back, like fight, like fight with, you know, Jacob, you know, fought with God, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I think we're, we're not, we're forgetting that that story is like, has a lot of meaning to it. Exactly. Um, but, um, your question I'm sorry, repeat it one more time. The decision-making. like decision-making. Um, for me, um, I remember vividly uh, in Houston, um, the church that I was ser- ser- that I went to and I served uh, was Dabra Salam, Medhani Alam. Um, and uh, I remember one time I went like on a weekday um, and I just sat out there and I was just crying because I was like, it- it's just like feeling torn. 
you know, like I, I grew up in church and then now like I'm in the city and then, you know, there's a little nightlife, social life, you know, but mm -hmm. it's like my conscious is never going to stop telling me to go to church. So that one day, uh, I think it was like on a Wednesday or something. Um, and I just sat there and I cried and I was like, I don't want this. Like, I don't want to feel torn anymore. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to choose somebody else over God. Like, um, I... I want God to dictate my life. Mm -hmm. I want him to be the center and everything else around him, you know? Um, and so, yeah. And I think after that day, I made a decision to s restart my journey. That's great. And do better. And it started with prayers that I woke up every morning. And I kid you not, the only thing I said was thank you. Like that first week, I think I just had tears every time I said thank you. And I, and me personally, I, I think that's like the best prayer, the most heartfelt prayer I have ever had. Mm -hmm. And I started that way. Like I didn't say, Abba chinhoi, like yeah. I didn't even, you know, say cross myself. I literally would say thank you. And that's how I started. And then, you know, I went back into Abba Tachinoi, then with Dasi Maram, then Dawit, you know, like going back into that. And it's always a journey. I think sometimes we feel like there's always a finish line, like, oh, exactly. now I'm done. Now I'm spiritually great. It's perfect, you know? No, you're always going to restart. You're always going to, you know, travel back. It's like it's like a friendship, right? Mm -hmm. Like you you go out of your way to meet up with your friends. You go out of your way to build those bonds. It's the same thing with God. You know, his, that bondship, though, should be the center of your life. Exactly. So, yeah. That's good. Uh, yeah. One thing before, I'm going to ask you the same thing, uh, Lucas. Uh, there's no finish line. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always still trying to figure out God. You could live a million years and you still don't know who God is, you know. And that that journey, it takes one step at a time. I love that story that just saying thank you is enough. You know, I think a lot of people, what they do is they stop on, uh, they want to do the Abba Hor, they want to do these prayers, they want to go to church uh, 6 a.m. And that is, that's the goal to get there early. But you can start at getting there 10, 20 minutes early at church. That is enough. You know, God can see that you are changing, you know. And so for you, Lucas, uh, you made a big decision a couple of months ago. And or well, a sure couple of years ago, probably, and that decision turned into a big achievement in, in, in you know spiritual life. Uh, tell us about that journey that you had, and and you know how it came about. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I want to go a little bit back before we even get to that decision. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, because there's just a lot of backstory going on. So, like, I think growing up, like you know, my spiritual life was really uh, connected to my parents because they're the ones waking up and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like when so I moved out for like college, like I had to just make that decision for myself. Like this was just, this is just for me. I think a lot of times, you know, like Marafa was saying, in our, our spiritual life is like for other people. And like what we don't realize is that our spiritual life, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do by coming to church, by praying and everything is just for us. Mm -hmm. It's just for, you know, me. And, you know, when I was in college, like I was just, really, I was really lost, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, you know, living this worldly life and then also trying to, you know, figure out, you know, what, what role uh, does the church play? You know, why do I need to come to church? And I think even when, once I like graduated college, like I was like, you know, really in another life, you know, I was in, you know, going out, you know, just living that other lifestyle, yeah, yeah. you know, where we're just out, out there. But even then, like, I would still try to come to church. And like, I vividly remember um, there was, there was one like Saturday night, like I really wanted to go to, you know, this gathering, you know, I just wanted to go out. But I, I remember the next Sunday was like some holiday or something. So literally what we, what, uh, you know, me and my friends did is, we you know, we went out and then right at midnight, midnight on the dot, like we left, we left. And then that morning I went to church because wow. that's how badly I knew I needed to come to church because I just needed to go. Like, I couldn't explain it. I didn't have, like, you know, some, like, real, like, reason why to describe it. But I just wanted to go to church. And it just took me, like, a long time. Like, I was I was battling, you know, going out and, like, you know, going to church all at the same time for, like, you know, really, like, a few months. Like, mm -hmm. really long time. And it, it, once I, you know, finally decided, like, I just, like, was at a point where I was, like, okay, God, like, if... You know, I really want to, you know, live a spiritual life. I really want to come back because I know I need it. And I just said, just God, show me that I need to go. And it wasn't like something like obvious. It wasn't something like, you know, like the heavens opened up and I, everything mm -hmm. became clear or something like that. It was just like, 
you know, I just got to a point where I knew I needed to come to church. I need to come to church on a regular basis. And, you know, it was weird. We, we I got this message from uh, um, one of my uh, brother's friends saying, hey, come to Bible study. And then so I just showed up, you know, and then I started meeting some of the other people in OTYD and learned, we learned a little bit about the Bible. And I was like, oh, wow, there's other people like me who are fighting, you know, and I think a lot of times we get lost, you know, thinking that, you know, like you guys said, we have to reach some uh, destination. A lot of times, you know, we think that our spiritual journey in our life has to have like a worldly destination. Mm -hmm. And what we have to realize is there's no, no worldly destination at all yeah. to our spiritual life. Like yeah. it's just heavenly. Like we all children of God, we're supposed to reach that uh, kingdom of heaven. That's it. Along the way during my, my journey, hopefully, you know, you can help other people, you can guide other people, but you're not going to like, you know, be okay spiritually. You're, you're never going to be like, oh, now I finally am good. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with in their spiritual life. Like when I first came to the church, like, you know, uh, in the first few months, I was like trying to like learn everything. I was like, when am I going to yep. feel okay? Yeah. When am I going to feel like good and secure? And then after a few months, I realized like, oh, there's no destination. I'm just always growing. Mm -hmm. Like there's always confession. There's always something to confess. You know, there's always a reason to come to church. There's always a reason to pray. There's always a reason to do something. So then that's how I started even growing more spiritually because I found a reason. Because then I started connecting God into every aspect of my life. And then I, I just used him as my guide. Yeah. So I think a lot of times, like what people get stuck on is like, they are waiting for some arrival point in their lives. Like, why should I come to church? Why do I need to come to church? You know, should I come to church? Um, you know, once I have kids, should I come to church? Once I let go of the party life, like, no, come to the church today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. you gotta come now. Like Maraf, she brought up a good point. She was, she just went to church and started crying, just said a thank you prayer. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, mm -hmm. I think we just have to start like, I, I used to sit in the back of the church, like all the way, literally against the wall, like against the wall, <laughs> like, you know, just sneaking in the middle of, could I say like once every few months? Yeah. Like it's just, just do something. Like, yeah. I, I don't think we should try to be afraid. Like there shouldn't be any fear because this is for you. This is for your life. You need this. Like no matter what you uh, really think, you really need to come to church. Like the, Otherwise your life is going to be full of darkness because... I mean, you know, um, once I graduated college, I was really looking for some kind of guidance. Because when you're a student, like you always have like, a, you have your exams, you have everything and it, everything's kind of piled up to where to like you can get, like, get distracted. Yeah, exactly. In, in that, you know, I was doing engineering, so I was getting really distracted. But like then once I graduated, like after work, you know, you only work eight hours a day. Yep. So then afterwards, you're like, what am I going to do? And I was just really lost looking for a guide. And then, you know, what ended up happening slowly but surely, I found that guidance in church. And I think what people have to realize is like spiritual life, it's not just a Sunday thing. Like you think we, uh, you know, when we're kids, you know, our parents dragging us to church. It's Say not that a... again for the people. <laughs> Say that again for the people, man. Please. Oh, church, spiritual life is not a Sunday thing yeah. when you go to um, church, you know, for, uh, can I say, it's not a Friday thing when you go to, um, you know, Bible study or when yeah. you go to choir practice. It's literally just every day. Like, how am I interacting with you guys? How am I interacting with my parents? How am I interacting with anybody? Like, it's just, it's been so amazing being a Christian. Like, yeah. I cannot, like, I know I'm like, you know, getting excited, but like, I cannot explain to you how amazing it is, you know, being in, in the church for the last few years, how, how it's impacted every aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. So we see, uh, we see the benefits, yeah. obviously. We see the advantages. We see that you found more of a purpose, uh, you know, coming closer to God. There's a direction in your life that you know you're headed towards. And, you know, and that is fulfilled only with God. Nothing like school or, or work or more money. Nothing could solve that, anything, yeah. you know. But, you know, how about that coming back to God? We talked about prayer. Mm -hmm. Just saying thank you is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. What about fasting? I mean, I'm going to be very honest with you. I, I will, you know. When I was in high school, I would starve myself. I don't take, I don't take no injerata. I don't take anything to uh, school. You know, what was your mm -hmm. journey like in terms of fasting? Did you start, you know, that small step? Did you go on that big fast and say, I'm, I'm going bigger, go home? Tell me, how was that process like for you guys? Um, fasting, like, so I started as a kid, you know, yeah. like the whole starting at seven years old. Yep. So my parents, um, you know, they instilled that in me. So, okay. I don't know, I might say something, I might be condemned or something, but once you start fasting and like you've done it for so long, it gets so easy because yeah. your body's accustomed to it. Yeah. Like 
that's like on a science level too. Yeah, like yeah. your body is used to like at this moment or this period of the year or this time of the year, your body is accustomed to vegan food, yeah. right? Just vegan, no meat. So like I got accustomed to it. Obviously, when I got to college, yeah. it got a little bit harder because, you know, no, nothing's vegan. But you know, the one time I'll shout out society. Now veganism is like a thing. It's cool now. It's <laughs> yeah. a new thing, right? Yeah. And like Houston is like a big yeah. foodie place. So. You've been doing it for a while anyway. Our yeah. church has been doing it for how many years? <laughs> years. Thousands, thousands of years, years right? They copy <laughs> us, you know? They copy everything we do. <laughs> they, they really do. <laughs> they sure do. They think we copy society, but they copy us, right? Hey, man. You know, it's all, it's all good as long as somebody's fasting and somebody's taking, you know, taking something out of it. But um, shout out to veganism, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Houston being a foodie, they opened up a lot of vegan stuff, um, having, having vegan options. So it became easier, right? The physical aspect, but fasting is not just food. Uh, I think I heard a sermon where if food is your main priority on like what you're fasting from, stop it. Don't fast. That's a good point. Stop. Wow. Like, because what you're doing is completely wrong. Because a doctor can tell you to fast for a surgery mm-hmm. and that's easy. Like, it's just food. And we do it. Like, you know? But, um, yeah, but like, this is like really like, um, I don't know how I say this in English, translated for me, like, um, you know, yeah, like you're, you're like, your flesh, like you're, it's getting weaker. So yeah. You're weakening, you're, you're your weakening yes. To strengthen your spirit. Your there soul, yeah. English yeah. is definitely my second language. Um, <laughs> So, it, no, you're weakening your flesh. And it, it's like that sort of clicked as I got older because it had nothing to do with food because obviously that's not an issue nowadays, you know, especially yeah. the past five years. But it's more, am I doing it right? Like when I'm fasting, am I really putting like everything I have to focus on my soul? What am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I saying to other people? You know, like what what is, what is my body doing? Like, you know, just everything and every aspect is what I, food became the bottom of my list. That's good. And then that's when fasting became like a new thing for me. It became different for me. Mm. Uh, my body wasn't accustomed to it anymore. Mm. My mind, my soul, you know? And it's like, it, you know, in a way it changed the game for me, you know? And so I, every fasting period, no matter what it is, sigdet, mm-hmm. very, like, um, very, very important. Like, you know, because it, I don't know, it humbles you. I, I think for me personally, like it humbled me. Because I'm bowing down to the Lord. Like I, I'm saying that I am unworthy. You know, like all the, all the, and it reminds me of the sins that I did, you know. And each, each fasting season, I was doing that. It's like I was going stronger for the non fasting season. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So then it's like the things I was doing in fasting became habit to where when I was not fasting, I'm seeing better. Like I'm hearing, I'm not putting myself in positions to where I'm hearing bad things. Uh, my mouth, like, you know, am I control? controlling that you know what i mean um yes there are times where i fall even till this day but it's like knowing that confession is still there repentance is still there i'm not taking advantage of it that's not what i'm saying but like i fall but i know that that you know there are steps that god has put in place for me you know to to kind of get back to my journey yet again you know it's that starting line you know always going back to that starting Mm -hmm. line um and never giving up and so, but fasting, very essential. Um, I think I've realized that more so now than ever, especially being a servant. Nothing happens without God says, mm. say so. You may think good things. You may have all these plans. You may have all, and, and they're they're great, right? Yeah. But how you know that's not, f- that's for you, you know? Did you ask God? Is that God's will for you? Yeah, they're great things, but maybe they're not for you. Maybe that's not the path he has in mind. So every time I try to start, um, you know, with a fast, with a prayer, whether that's three days a week, even if it's just two days, whatever I can give, I just need to restart, push that button again. Mm-hmm. And fasting, sigdet, salot, prayer, um, are just very essential. Yeah. Like, and I think this past year, I've realized that more so than ever. So that's just kind of mine. One on one step, you know. What yeah. about you, Lucas? Were you uh, were you similar to me? Like, if you ate a pizza chicken, you said, "Ah, oh, I gotta finish it. You know, I gotta <laughs> let me finish it, then I'll start back my fast." Or were you you were serious from the day one too? Um, honestly, my my situation is a little bit different. Um, growing up, like as a kid, I I didn't fast. Mm-hmm. Um, when I went to college, I didn't fast. Mm-hmm. So I didn't fast until like. Right after like I graduated college, I started watching a few videos about orthodoxy and I'm like, no, let me start fasting. But even then I was still a part of, you know, 
the like you know going out life yeah yeah gathering life so even like you know i would pass like wednesday fridays but it was friday you know i'm still going out <laughs> 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 like, you know i wouldn't i wouldn't i wanted to skip out on that like so like it's it was just a constant like battle yeah like you know miss, uh, even though like i was going to church and i was going out i was fasting i was trying to like you know do everything and that was like you know that was kind of like my, my life everything's kind of mixed up a little bit and i think a lot of times like people are always just waiting until they go from you know uh from their like okay let me finish this and let me start my spiritual life yeah and i think exactly i think like a lot of times like you just have to go out and just start something so i started wednesday friday fasting good, good. In, even though I was going out, but I started Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> and that's how you start. Yeah, the yeah. start is what counts. Yeah, yeah. Right? I it's not let, yeah. let's just like yeah. I I started because like that that helped me like build the habit, and then I'm like okay, I'm restricting myself from eating certain foods, and then then I you know I always I even when I was in like um, college, I started having like a prayer life, not like anything complicated, not reading any books or anything like that. Just me and God. Okay, here's what I'm like. Here's in my what's in my heart. Let me just have a conversation. So I started out by doing that. Then, you know, as I started, you know, uh, learning more and more, going to OTYD Bible studies and stuff like that, then I started, okay, let me let me start fasting, like the Ganna fast. Let me mm -hmm. fast that. So then I started fasting that, I started praying, and I started, you know, growing, growing more and more. Then I started, you know, adding on a sacramental life, uh, yeah. going, finding a confession father, uh, doing confession. Then, you know, growing more, uh, sick death, prostation, all that stuff. So I slowly started adding everything. I didn't add everything, like, all at once. Exactly. Because, like, you know, you're just trying to get started. And I, I think, like, making sure that even though, you know, you didn't, like, even if you didn't live that, you know, fasting life before, just getting started is going to help you a ton. And and well, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say the more you delay, the harder it gets. Oh, yeah. Uh, the more you delay the harder it gets. You think it's going to get easier. You think it's going to stop. You think it's going to like, you know, oh, I'm going to get older. I'm going to become, you know, better and not going to go out mm -hmm. or more Christian. No, you're not. Yeah. It's not going to happen. I promise you. Yeah. The more you delay, it, it, it just gets harder. And I don't think some people realize that. I think yeah. they think like they give themselves a deadline. It's yeah. like, mm, I think you under, like you overestimating yeah. yourself, yeah. I, I believe, you know, you're, you're saying, um, I think when you go to God, it's saying that you're not strong. It's because you need him. That's why you're you're going to him. But like you trying to set these dates or set these timelines for yourself, it's it's somehow helping when it's not. And I say that speaking from experience. Yeah. You know, um, even though like, you know, like you said, um, it's like the whole Christian life, but it was like getting to the sacramental life Yeah. that I delayed and... Um, like the thoughts and stuff, I was like, okay, you can do this if you start on this year or after homecoming or after yeah, Nintendo's yeah, birthday yeah. or this, this, this. Like, and then I was like, like a year passed and I was like, uh, you're still at the same place <laughs> the same and level. everybody's birthday passed, everything's passed. Like, yeah. what are you waiting on exactly? Like, you know, and yeah, I just overestimated myself. So don't delay, don't, don't delay. That's yeah, I can add on to that. Yeah. Cause like, like I, the biggest like temptation from the devil is procrastination. Mm -hmm. I remember um, even like to start a lot of things in my spiritual life, like I just did it without thinking. Because I think if we think, like there's no way you can think yourself out of, like, you know, some towards some solution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the devil is going to make you think yourself out of doing something good. I remember, um, you know, when I was trying to start my uh, sacramental life, like I was getting out of work and, um, you know, I was, you know, I had the number of the confession father, and I was like, oh, should I call? Should I call? Should I call? Mm. I was trying to figure it out, and then You've like, all been there. yeah, like, yeah. should I call? Like, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to, like, maybe if I wait a little bit, you know, I started like setting deadlines, you know, trying to create a calendar and everything, and then, you know, what I just realized, I was doing this as I was walking to my car, like, um, the place I worked at, like, you know, the building was about a mile away from my car or something, mm -hmm. not a mile, maybe like half a mile, so it took like ten minutes to walk, and I was walking, walking, thinking, thinking, and I was just like. As soon as I got into my car, I was like, I can't think anymore. I just clicked the button wow. yeah. and called. Just clicked it and called. And then after that, like, I started the life of confession. Good. So, like, the thing is, like, stop thinking. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. They, like, a lot of times, like, you know, you already have the number of the confession father. You already know where the Bible study is at. You already know where the church is at. You already know the fast. Like, everything is really right there. So, just go ahead and start. Mm. It's okay. People are waiting for uh, the perfect time. Yeah, you know, the perfect time. This is the day that I do it. But you just got to do it whenever. There know. is never a perfect time. I just want to let y'all know that. There's never a perfect day. There's mm. never a perfect minute, a second, a week, a month. There is never. 
Okay. There exactly. never will be because why? The devil is around and mm-hmm. always telling us tomorrow when tomorrow is not guaranteed. So um, that's one thing my confession father said. That's it's definitely good. not me. I don't want to take off props, <laughs> but yeah. Absolutely. And and what you were saying, um, Lucas, actually, you're trying to learn this. You're trying to do this. You're trying to do that. Um, how is that? What do y'all think about, you know, a perfect Christian? Is that true? Is there such thing as a perfect Christian? Or, you know, do you see yourself ever becoming that? What, what you know, most people, when they come back to the church, they see somebody who's always at church. They see somebody who's uh, always in the mesmore practice and everything. They're like, this guy is just amazing. He does everything correctly. But that's not true. You know, there's, it's, you don't know what's behind the doors. You don't know what that journey going back is the main, that's the place to start. You know, what do y'all think about that? The perfect Christian. Uh, it's not real. <laughs> it's not, yeah. uh, it's not that real. person that you see striving every day, uh, maybe first one there, always helping, cleaning, mm-hmm. always trying to sing mazmur, the loudest, always being at practice, always going that extra mile. Um, they're probably fighting with God just like Jacob was, and we don't know it. Um, just because what you see on the outside does not reflect on the inside. Um, and a lot of people tend to even those that are on the outside thinking they're going to be judged, Mm -hmm. like you're judging those that are in the inside too. So I think we should never judge anybody, no matter where aspect they are, whether they're outside, inside the church, maybe just in the back of the church, you know, like we don't know where they are. Um, You have no idea what is going on in somebody's head. You don't know what goes on with that person and their connection with God. Only, only you and God know, Mm -hmm. you know, um, so don't judge like, you know, you don't, um, cause I mean, like me, like I always served, I was always, um, you know, I love mesmur. I love like Yari Dawi mesmur. you know, I'm always trying to learn it, but like, I mean, in college and I was learning all those and doing all that, like you didn't know that I was still going out, having mm-hmm. a night life and, you know, and struggling, you know, but if you are just seeing me at church and trying to put me at the perfect, you know, trying to pit me, paint me as like a good Christian, then like you're off, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so like, don't, don't go based off of what you, what you know, or what you see. Let me say that of what you see, um, only, uh, start your own journey, focus on your own journey. And then, you know, your light, your light will shine and that might bring somebody else one day. So just focus on you. Um, you know, cause we don't know what goes on. People come to church. It is a hospital. It is for the sick. Mm-hmm. It is not for the righteous. Um, and I promise you, there's probably nobody righteous amongst yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. You know, so especially now, the nowadays, you know, times are hard. So um, just know you're in a hospital. So everybody is sick all around you. And we go to get healing. Well so, yeah. Good. What about you, uh, Lucas? Have you felt like, because it stops a lot of people from coming to church. Like, oh, I can never be like this guy. He's my role model, but I can never be like him. He does too much. I don't see myself being like that. And that stops a lot of people. Uh, you know, what was that for you? I think one thing people have to understand is everyone who's at church, if they are trying to really live a Christian life, every single one of them are fighting. Mm-hmm. They're struggling. They're struggling to get closer to God. Um, I think, you know, if you look at someone and you think that, you know, they're your role model, one thing you have to understand is they're fighting just like you. Like us right here, who you guys see right now, are fighting. Exactly. Every single one of us all are fighting to get to closer to God. Exactly. So I think if you are in a position where you're, um, you know, trying to get back into the church, trying to get closer to God, I think a lot of times what you have to realize is we shouldn't have um, someone who's like a roadblock to us almost. Mm. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I cannot be like him, so I, I cannot even uh, come into church. Mm-hmm. You don't even know where he started. Yes. Even exactly. like, so even if someone like grew up in the church and they were, you know, they were growing up to the church and they now they're here and they've, you know, lived in the church and everything, we don't know what your journey could be. Nobody has any idea. Like even for myself, like I had no, if you ask me like four years ago, would I be spending every Friday at a Bible study? <laughs> no, like, no, not at all. Like, I, I think well, one thing we have to understand is we have to stop fighting God all the time. Like, what you have to realize is just take everything step by step. What you're seeing with that person who's serving every day is an end product. Right now, you know, 
what you guys see with a lot of these servants, they they've been you know in church for years mm-hmm. fighting, or maybe even a short period of time, and they've just started and they're trying to get closer to God. So I I think a lot of times we have to just stop using people as role models because even if that role model falls, mm-hmm. you're like oh, I can't come to church because exactly. he 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 fell or something. You don't know what he's struggling with. He'll come back. He's a Christian always gets back up. Yeah. That's that's the thing. You're going to fall and you're going to get back up. So I, I think a lot of times you just have to stop looking at other people. Stop looking at your parents. Stop looking at your cousin who's a deacon or whatever. You just focus on you and see how you can get closer to God, not everyone else. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a saint. Yes. Yeah. We can look up to them. them. Yes. Yes. Virgin Mary, you know, um, Christ himself, right? That's who we're trying to resemble. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But stop looking at the people around you all the time. Don't focus so much on them. Obviously, we can have role models, but don't let that role model like take you down or stop you because that's another temptation from the devil. Another temptation. There's a lot of temptations of the devil. But when you have someone who's in front of you, like use them as a source of encouragement, mm-hmm. not as a source of discouragement. Exactly. Like, I, I want to be like that person. So figure out what they did. Like at, for example, at work, if you have like a, a senior engineer or something, you're not like, oh, I can never be like this engineer. So I'm going to quit my job. Like nobody says that. Like nobody says that. That's so true. Like, so why would you bring that mindset into here? Because you think it's a temptation. It's a temptation. So take out that idea. Yeah. Good. So we're wrapping up. We hit a, a lot of points, um, fasting, uh, just getting started Wednesdays and Fridays, you know, uh, prayer, saying thank you. That was a great example. You know, all of that. Um, as we wrap up, maybe one advice you say, that journey coming back to church, um, what would you give to that one person that probably needs to hear this? What would you say? Anything from your heart. Okay. Um, I think, I think both of us said a lot of like different advice, um, like, you know, don't delay. There's never a perfect time. Um just um, always put God in the center of everything. Like if you truly want him, like if you truly want that relationship, he's always there with his hands out. Uh, Don't, I mean, like the whole letting somebody else dictate, Mm -hmm. like I think that stops a lot of the youth, especially within the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Like we we tend to focus on like the rumors or what would my parents say, what would my family say? And that's a lot of the time that stops us. But um then at that point, you're not really worried about your relationship with God. You're worried about with people. So if that's the case, then you have to really internally look like, what are you striving for? You know, is it is it God? If it's truly God, then you wouldn't care about what anybody thinks. Because if, if I mean, we're people, we have unforgivables, we have like, we're, we, we'll spread rumors, we'll mm-hmm. do whatever, but he's not like that. He is nowhere near that. He is perfect. He he forgives. He loves. Like we are forgetting um, the God that we serve, the God that created us, the God that loves us, the God that died for us. And let's not forget that because he is all loving. He is all kind. Um, and I promise you, your sin is not something that hasn't been heard before, that's mm-hmm. not been done before. Exactly. Um, you know, like uh, yesterday at our conference, um, uh, a brother of ours said, befriend a saint. Mm-hmm. There has been a lot of saints that have done a lot of things that we may not know because we don't open up in a book and read what they went through. They went through things that we're probably st- currently going through. I mean, you know, minus the technology and all that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, like, don't think you are the exception to the rule. We're all in the same boat. We are all striving for Christ and he has so much love to give. I promise you that. His love is vast. It is deeper than the ocean, larger than the ocean, larger than the earth, more than we can ever imagine. Mm-hmm. So don't put your human minds, try to try to limit, limit him mm-hmm. because he is limitless. Um, so, yeah. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. She looked us. That was good. <laughs> you were waiting for that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, there's a, always a lot to say when you want to give advice to someone. But I think the, the biggest thing is... Um, like we, you have to understand that there, you need God in your life. Like a lot of us don't understand that, okay, I'm going to wait for God to come or I'm going to wait for this to happen. I'm going to wait to get married. I'm going to wait to have kids. I'm going to wait to graduate college. Really, well, one thing I, I realized very slowly is that I needed God in my life. You know, I, I started 
just pretty much accidentally coming to church, mm-hmm. you know, sitting in the back. Then I started coming more and more. Then I started getting closer to the front, closer to the front, closer to the front, closer to the front. So I think a lot of us, what we have to understand is it doesn't really matter where you start. Like I was, uh, we, we've heard this and I was struggling. Like I was just all over the place, you know, trying to figure out who I was. The church is your identity. Like a lot of us don't understand this. The church is really our identity. It's who we are. We are all children of God. And when you try to run away from that identity, you become lost. Like I was lost. A lot of youth have, are lost because they don't understand that the church is our identity. And the second thing is you have to understand is, um, like Maraf mentioned, is God's mercy is limitless. Like it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, what you've done. Like it's limitless. Um and I think the third thing we have to understand is stop trying to fight God's will. Like if I fought God's will, then I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I wouldn't be, you know, a servant of the church. I, you know, a lot of people, they try to um, put their own will and put their own game plan into mm-hmm. God's plan. Like I would never expected my life to be like this, like at all. Like I had no plan. So I just stopped planning. I put the books away. I put the spreadsheets away. And I just decided, okay, whatever happens is going to happen. And I'm going to let God take control. And I'm going to be a voice for him. I'm going to be a mic for him. So just let God live in your life. Just stop fighting him. And you'll be able to gain so many uh, spiritual benefits. You'll be able to um, live such a fruitful life. You'll become a more kinder person. Like it'll completely change your life, how you interact with people at work, at school, your own uh, mindset, how much peace you'll have in your life. Like I, I remember, um, you know, when I was in college and, you know, uh, I, I mean, after graduating college, when I was living, uh, trying to live a life away from God, how unpeaceful that life was. Yeah. Like I was always constantly searching for God. You know, a lot of people, uh, they don't understand this. A lot of times, like, we are searching for God in, like, the world. Like, in, when we go out or do something, we're trying to search for that inner peace. And I remember, you know, after I'd go to a gathering and I'd wake up and then I'm like, okay, what did I accomplish today? Like, nothing. There was nothing. There was no nothing to gain. And so I think a lot of times we have to really um, understand that when you build a relationship to God, it's rewarding. Because at the end of the day, when you wake up, when you go to the next day, you're living that Christian life. You're always fighting. You're always having that inner peace that you can't get anywhere else. So. Good. Wow. Uh, I just want to say thank you, both of y'all, mm-hmm. for taking the time out and for serving all of us. I had an amazing time hosting y'all. Uh, on this topic, it's it's very vast, and we could say a million different things about it. But uh, I love what both of y'all said. One thing that came to me is uh, start today. You know, today matters. Don't pull it out to, to tomorrow because it's never guaranteed. And, uh, you know, comparison is a thief of joy, I've heard. Don't mm-hmm. look at somebody else's uh, journey and say, I can't be like them. Uh, so with that, we are going to call it a wrap. What I want to say is uh, that the church is our mother and she is our protector. She gave birth to us, baptized us, and we will live through her. And uh, I can't wait for episode two is coming out, and we are having, tune in for another episode. Subscribe to our YouTube and to our OTYD Dallas, to our podcast, and we will be back for episode two. Okay, tune in. Bye-bye, OTYD Dallas. Take care. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Bye, guys. As always, thanks for tuning in to OTYD, the podcast. Be sure to check out our website at otyd.org and follow our Instagram and Facebook accounts at OTY Dallas. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we drop episodes on Sunday evenings. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. See you next time.